Hello and welcome to another tutorial on GIMP and how to make uh, signatures and how to use GIMP in general really. Um, this was a requested tutorial and this is just basically the steps I go through when I make a signature or a background or any kind of graphic image. Bring up GIMP and I'm actually going to be making a um, background today but the same principles apply if you were to make a, uh, a signature or anything else. Um, for backgrounds, I uh, make a new one and I make them as 1680 width by 1050 height. That's the uh, max resolution I have for my computer and that's the size I like. Um, my open image, I go to the my separate folder where I keep all the artwork and stuff. And once it's up, I just... Uh, find the ones that I want to use. And today I'm actually going to be making a um, Prince of Persia background. Uh, just showing you guys how I would go about doing this. It normally takes a couple seconds for everything to load up. So I'm going to pause it. Alright, now that the uh, renders are up and ready for use, um, I go to my primary plate where I'm going to be actually making it and I color it just a full black that way things uh, show up easier and stuff like that um, then I just uh, control shift N in order to create new layers and I'll just make like you know eight layers to just right off the bat that way I don't have to worry about making layers as I go um, if I need more layers, I can always make them, but if I don't use this many layers, then I can delete them. Um, I never do anything to my background image except for color it black. That way, I have I have a base thing to fall back on. Um, for my first layer, I uh, normally find one of the images that I like and that I want to use. And I'll, I'm going to use this one first. Now, a lot of renders, the render creator will put like their little signature on it. So I erase that. No offense to them. It's just, well, it just doesn't look very good in a uh, an artwork. So I uh, select the brush I use, and I just use my standard little circle guy that, you know, pretty much does everything that you want it to. Um, I have like somewhere around 4,000 different brushes, so my brushes load kind of slow sometimes. So I just erase their little signature, and then I tell it to save real quick. That way I have the uh, image without the render signature. And then I select it. Uh, control C uh, select my palette uh, control V in order to paste it on and voila there we have the first image now I'm gonna move him he's I want him kind of over over off and to the side kind of kind of like that and I also want them a little smaller, so I'm going to uh, use my scaling tool in order to just, you know, bring them down a bit. Just scale them. Now, he is a very, very high data um, render, so that's why he's moving so slowly. There. Just kind of have him off to the side over there. And then the uh, and then I anchor it. You need to remember to be anchoring these things. I select a new layer, then uh, bring up the next picture I want to use. My next picture is gonna be this guy. Now him, I'm gonna do something a little bit different with him. I'm going to drop down, and then I'm going to uh, I think I'm going to 
change his occupancy. First, I'm going to make him a little bit larger. Now, you need to be careful with your uh, renders if you make them larger, because some of them, if they're not uh, high-quality renders, they will get pixelated and very, very ugly once you blow them up. Luckily, this guy is a very good render, so he he's not doing that. And then going to anchor him back onto the layer. And I'm going to change his occupancy. Just make him a little bit more, you know, see-through. Make him kind of faded, almost uh, almost watermark, kind of. I'm also going to move his layer to below the other layer that I made. That way, you know, I'm trying to make him behind the other guy's layer, but for some reason it's not moving his layer for me. This is odd. Well, for some reason, it's not letting me do it the normal way. But you can just use the little arrows in order to do it. Now, changing which layers are on top makes it so what image you see uh, perfectly. See, like this, now that he is on the layer behind this one, this guy's arm and stuff shows up. Whereas, if he was, if it was the other way around, then this image would take precedent and his arm and back would be blotted out. Now, with this render, I'm, I'm not loving the fire, how it's coming out like that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a very rough uh, select and cut of it. That way, I can get rid of it just real easy. Um, I'm going to use my racing tool just to clean it up a little bit. The reason I'm doing it such a such a rough, um, fast, quick, lazy way is A, I'm just trying to make this for a tutorial, and B, um, I'm going to put some background coloring into this anyway, so it's not going to show up. As... Um, for the next image, I'm going to if I can find it. Don't need my media player. Just I'm gonna use I'm gonna use her as the next image. Uh, select it, copy it, minimize, paste it, and cut it out because I forgot to select a new layer, and then paste it back in. Now her, I kind of want her off to the side, only like half of her showing. Kind of. Uh, Now for her, we're going to do something extra. 